Hi, welcome back to Rev Solutions. Today we're going to be doing an in-depth review on the Kawasaki Vulcan S650 Performance Edition. This one is a 2021 model. Let's get into that review. The 2021 Kawasaki Vulcan S Performance, not your average cruiser. Standing apart with its parallel twin engine, unique frame and suspension layout, and designed for the independent minded riders, the Kawasaki Vulcan S does not require the rider to conform to some herd mentality, outdated fashion or lifestyle, accessible in all senses of the word. The accommodating new Vulcan S encourages you to go your way. Configure your Kawasaki Vulcan S with the ErgoFit solutions. Here we go, the Kawasaki Vulcan S Performance 2021. Uh, as you can see though, for those of you who know, even though this is a performance one which should come with the arrow exhaust system unfortunately there's a backlog uh, from japan or china uh, i think it was china that uh, kawasaki said uh, so at the moment it doesn't have the performance exhaust which is a bit of a pain however it is allowing me to get a feel for this bike in a standard exhaust system setup and then i'll be able to bring to you another review on how it is with the performance exhaust it's more for noise rather than actual performance gains however i think it will give the bike a nice extra bit of uh, an edgy look to it so let's jump on it and let's take it for a ride right so very very basic setup turn the key so i stand up it's in gear and off we go so we're going to start this ride at goodwood it's a week of the uh goodwood festival of speed unfortunately well unfortunately but fortunately i can't be going to it because hopefully we're going to wales for some riding adventures but let's get out of Goodwood and I will show you what it is like. Now the first thing you notice when you, you sit on this bike is the, obviously the, the controls are in the forward position. It's not a problem. It does take a little bit getting used to. But once you've ridden it a few times, it is no problem at all. It's actually really comfortable. Quite a nice aeroplane in that hangar over there. Let's go through the, uh, the Goodwood tunnel. Here we go again. Now the Kawasaki Vulcan does have quite a nice tune to it. It's, uh, I think it's more induction noise than anything else at this moment in time. Because like I said, it does have a completely standard exhaust system. But the actual handling of this bike is, is really, really good. If you haven't ridden one, definitely get on one and take it for a spin. Now I've got to be a little bit reserved with this bike still as it's uh, brand new. It's only done 458 miles. So it hasn't had its first run-in service with the oil change. However, um, I phoned Kawasaki today and they said that I can take it near on a 1,000 miles if need be before I have the first oil change. Therefore, I've jumped on the bike and I've taken it out today. Ideally, I want to get it serviced before a 1,000 miles. And I've got the service booked for a couple of weeks' time. Now, the pickup is really, really good on this machine. It does really, really well. It is only 60, 61 brake horsepower, and I believe about 49 foot-pound of torque. That said, it really does move. I mean, I haven't opened this up properly. I will give you a review later on when I've had that first service and I've uh, been able to push the machine a little bit faster and harder. But the first impressions of it, it's, it's really nippy, really nimble. When I bought this machine, I did think, have I made the right decision? And I do still think that when I see it parked up and I haven't run it for a little while, I think, oh, have I done the right thing or have I uh, kind of shot myself in the foot a little bit? I have definitely done the right thing. Every time I get on this bike, it puts a smile on my face. I really, really enjoy it. It's just a simple motorcycle. There's no fancy gadgets. There's no 
heavy electronic that you're going to sit at for an hour or two and try and get your head around it. It's got a rev counter, a clock, mileometer, speedo, gear counter, and a fuel gauge. Oh, and it also tells you if you're riding economically, which is really good. But other than that, that's it. Simple, easy machine to ride. Six gears. It looks good. You've got the Japanese build quality. It feels good to ride. It's got a nice amount of torque. And not a lot of torque. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this bike is a massive performance bike. But for the weight, 229 kilograms, uh, it moves the bike really well with a 90 kilogram person on so you got no problems riding it tucks in nicely now I have actually had the uh, the pegs on the deck a few times going round a roundabout leaning into it not over the top <laughs> and it's uh, it's ground out let's go up to the Goodwood racetrack let's have a look at this never actually been up here quite nice up here isn't it amnesty bin what have we got here Zero tolerance policy to the use of drugs. Please use bins provided to deposit any illegal substances before entering the venue. Check out that. Oh, look at this view. What a stunning view. So lucky to live so close to West Sussex. And I don't know if you can see over there, you can see the Solent in the distance. A bit hazy today, but still an absolutely beautiful, beautiful view. And this is what I love about the Kawasaki Vulcan. It's such a chilled out ride that you don't want to be going fast everywhere. You just want to explore, have fun, just see different places. It's really, really nice. Now for its parallel twin engine, it is really, really smooth. So it's the same engine they use in the Ninja 650, the Kawasaki Versus 650, and the Kawasaki Vulcan 650. So they all share the same engine. They're all tuned slightly differently. Now what's it like off-road? <laughs> Suspension is actually quite good. Let's take it on this dirt track a little bit. I'm probably going to end up dropping the bike here, but never mind. So, uh, yeah, suspension is quite nice. A little bit bumpy. <laughs> but then look at what the surface is I'm riding on. Changing gears on this bike is really, really easy. The gear selector is very comfortable. The front brake is only a single disc now. However, for a single disc, it's, it's not too bad. Again, this bike doesn't have loads and loads of power, so a single disc is more than adequate for it obviously you've got a single disc at the rear i believe it's a single piston caliper as well so not a lot of stopping power but again for what it is it works well now one other thing i do find on this bike and i have ridden another uh, cruiser style that when you go over a bump your backside leaves the seat quite often which is uh definitely an experience to be had and a brief moment when you bounce you think oh i'm about to lose uh lose the bike from underneath me but you soon end up straight back on it again that's just the position of the bike on the cruises i think but the handling of this uh falcon is really really nice it is relatively precise you can flick it about nicely and it goes exactly where you want it to go the turning circle is uh quite poor on it but at the end of the day it's a cruiser bike it's not designed for uh sharp precision maneuvers like a sports bike now obviously as you know with the uh, Kawasaki Vulcan you've got the ergo system now the ergo system is so Kawasaki can tailor each individual Vulcan to the riders specific requirements you can adjust the foot pegs you can bring them back or push them forward these are set in the furthest forward position now when this goes back to Kawasaki for its uh, first service I will be getting them brought back just one click I think on the long ride, I feel like I slip down the seat slightly, which gives me a bit of an ache in my lower back. Now, looking at all the other reviews and also uh, on the forums for the Kawasaki Vulcan, that is quite a uh, common feature. People are saying that the actual standard seat that Kawasaki provide with the Vulcan is not overly comfortable. It is a comfortable seat if you're only using it for short periods of time. The seat again like the foot pegs they can be adjusted to meet the riders requirements you can have a forward seat which push you closer to the controls and a mid seat and a seat that will leave you a little bit further away from the controls so again that's nice and customizable and also you can customize the position of the handlebars i think these handlebars are in an absolute perfect position for me it's a nice reach forward 
nothing too drastic it works really well so for me it's just going to be adjust the foot pegs and i think this will fit a lot better now the wind mirrors the wind mirrors give you amazing visibility they are one of the best out there no doubt however they are also one of the ugliest out there they are not pretty wind mirrors kawasaki really should have designed something a bit sleeker and a bit better looking the, these are just disgusting but they do the job very very well the wind resistance on this bike like most naked bikes is uh, pretty rubbish you can really feel it pushing into your chest the performance package does come with the uh, front headlight cowling which offers you maybe a slight bit of protection from the elements uh, wind but let's face it it isn't much you're still going to get a lot of wind in your chest but aesthetically it looks so much better with that front cowling on you do get quite a lot of feedback from the controls which is really nice you've got a good idea what this bike is doing at all times the indicators are positioned really really nice there's no fiddling around trying to figure out where the indicators are some up indicators right next to it with a random place to park that it's crashed into a field Now the suspension on the uh, the Vulcan is, is pretty good. I have adjusted it to make it a little bit softer from factory. However, that tiny adjustment that I made uh, has made the world of difference. This bike is now really nice on a long ride. But like I said, it's just the, uh, the actual seat comfort. The suspension is good. When you go into uh, the night or if you go a bit darker, the display lights up a nice pale blue, which again, helps you see really well so i've got no issues looking down at the instrument panel and the vulcan is just a just a chilled out ride i absolutely love it get on this bike arms out legs out and just cruise now the bike can do speed but it also just inspires you just to take a chilled out ride just enjoy it wow that was a big bug just hit my helmet no, camera's all right. <laughs> Thought it might have uh, splattered right across the uh, the lens. Never mind. Now, obviously, the height of the bike is, I believe, 705 millimeters. So it is a very, very low ride height. So when you are sat in traffic, you are—I wouldn't say you're struggling to see over cars, but you don't have great visibility down the road. Now, for those of you who have seen my video on the uh, Honda CB500X. You'll know that I absolutely love this section of the road. It is brilliant. Nice foresty. And on a cruising bike, it is perfect. I just wish this road was a lot longer to get some real nice cruising rides up here. Got nice sweeping corners. And this bike absolutely flows with it. You've got this nice little chicane in S-Bend around here. And the bike just takes it in its stride. Beautiful, look at this. This is what roads are made of. If you're in the market for a, a cruiser style motorcycle, definitely take the Kawasaki Vulcan S out for a ride. This bike is so much fun. It's just an easy bike and that's what I love about it. You can just go out riding enjoying the actual way the bike handles not having to go want to go fast the machine doesn't make you want to go fast you can just properly bimble around i mean look at this sweeping beautiful corners the bike just laps it all up i can't get enough of this it's just brilliant look at this road if you've not ridden this you've got to get on it look at that it's only a short bit of road and it does end very abruptly but it is worth every second so is the kawasaki vulcan uh, a bike that beginners could get on with oh without a doubt there is no doubt in my mind 
that if you are a beginner motorcyclist and you're looking at the Kawasaki Vulcan you could easily get on with this bike if you're thinking it's got a 650cc engine that's going to be a bit too big one start on 300 400 don't when you look at motorcycles they and you look at the engines it's not about the cc output it's about the way they are designed the power output that they have this has only got 60 61 brake horsepower it's not a lot yet if you look at a uh, Suzuki GSX-R600 you're looking about 120 plus brake horsepower out of a lower CC engine so do not be put off by this being a 650 it is not a scary fast bike it has got enough power that you can handle enough power that you can learn how to ride with and that is what you want from a, from a new motorcycle you don't want to be able to you don't want to go and get a new motorcycle and then five months later think do you know what I haven't got enough power I need to go and get more power and a lot of people make that mistake but with the Vulcan S650 I genuinely don't think you're gonna want to be rushing out there and grabbing another motorcycle with more power because this bike has got such a usable power band that you can just get on it you can ride you can learn and even if like me you've been riding for several years and you've had fast motorcycles you can get on it and absolutely enjoy every moment of being on this little 650cc engine it's all about the riding experience for me on this bike now i know a lot of people are comparing the uh the 650 vulcan s to a sports bike saying that it's derived from the ninja 650 which is a sports bike i want to stop you all there the ninja 650 is not a sports bike it is in sports bike clothing but it is not a sports bike it's a parallel twin 60 to 65 brake horsepower motorcycle that is not a sports bike a 300 cc is not a sports bike the ninja 300 is not a sports bike so do not compare this vulcan 650 to a sports bike just because it's got a ninja 650 engine i don't think any sports bike sorry let me rephrase that i don't think any bike under 100 brake horsepower can claim to be a sports bike they are not sports bikes so do not compare the vulcan s650 to a sports bike it just isn't one now i've got that off my chest what can you compare this to i believe there's a harley davidson 700 or a 750 that would be a good comparison because they're both cruiser bikes but i don't want to compare it to any other bike really i think this bike is fantastic on its own as a little 650 cruiser because you're sat so low in the seat on this bike when you go into the corners and you, you really lean in you feel just a whole part of the bike <laughs> Now, is it good value for money? That is a big question because the Vulcan S performance comes in at, I believe, £7,499. And what do you get for that money? Well, let's be honest, you get a really basic bike. Is this bike overpriced? I'd say yes. I believe it is overpriced. However, that didn't stop me going out and buying it. Now, why did I buy the bike, even if I am going to say it is overpriced? I bought it because it looks absolutely fantastic you've got a really nice stretched out cruiser ride on this machine it comes with two years kawasaki warranty it's a hundred pound a month it looks really nice with the uh, performance exhaust it looks really nice with the uh, headlight cowling i wanted a cheap cruiser motorcycle that wasn't going to cost me a lot of money per month and the kawasaki vulcan s is just that it is just a a nice looking simple motorbike that is on pcp let's face it i'm not going to be keeping this bike forever i'll be chopping it in at some point getting another bike when uh, i've got a bit more money in the uh, in the pot against this uh, finance but for the few years that i have it i'm gonna absolutely love it but yes i think it is slightly overpriced because i could have got a second hand bike for potentially the same amount of money if not less with a lot more 
to offer for uh, for the price but I just wanted a simple second motorcycle to jump on not really have to worry too much about thinking what the bike's doing just just get on and enjoy it and the Vulcan S I mean look at it in the mirror that looks cracking look at that bike yeah I love it it's quite long compared to the uh, the Rebel it's easy to filter it's easy to maneuver it's just a great bike but yeah I do think Kawasaki could have bought the price down a little bit on it potentially sold it for five thousand pound I think five thousand would have been a good a good price maybe 550 with the uh, the performance package but I think you're paying about fifteen hundred pound more to go for the performance package than you are over the basic model now I get the exhaust is going to be quite expensive from Kawasaki Direct but £1,500 for, let's face it, an exhaust and a bit of plastic at the front of the bike. But then again, you get people like me that will pay it because you're not paying the money outright. You're paying £100 a month, which when you look at it that way, you don't really appreciate how much it costs, do you? It's just £100 a month. The insurance for me on this bike with no, no claims, three years of riding is only £40 a month. So for £140 a month, you're getting a brilliant motorcycle. Now the other thing I like about the uh, the Kawasaki Vulcan S650 performance package is that, let's face it, it's a low power bike. So when you got on cracking roads, you can really enjoy them without even having to worry about what speed you're doing and if you're about to go flying over the speed limit, which makes it even more enjoyable like this one we're about to hit on now. again this bike is just so easy on the handling just cruises effortlessly if I was to take this bike to Europe Germany Switzerland go across the Alps you're gonna have so much fun the experiences you're gonna have on this bike are gonna be worth remembering equally a couple of days up in Scotland Wales you're gonna love it it is just an enjoyable motorcycle it's a proper I say budget end cruiser it is because when you look at the likes of Harley Davidson you're looking at double figures for their bikes and I get this bike doesn't have the same heritage and the same look as a Harley but a quick glimpse and it does and I've ridden that road many a times on sports bikes. It just doesn't have the same appeal as it does on a cruiser. It's brilliant. I, I absolutely love this machine. Now when you come to a stop on this bike, where the seat is so low at 705 millimeters, it is ridiculously easy to be flat-footed you can stand up and the bike is right down low but the feet in position I, I really like it I like the forward controls my my legs they are fully extended just before they hyperflex at the knees and uh, I love it but I highly recommend getting out on this Kawasaki Vulcan S taking it for a test ride if you've never done it before you are going to enjoy it just forget that it's got 60, 61 horsepower. Just forget that. Forget that it's only got 49 foot pound of torque. If you put that out of your head and just get on this bike and enjoy it for what it is, I have no doubt in my mind, you are gonna love this bike. And please do not get on this bike thinking it's a sports bike. Can I compare it to a sports bike? No, you can't. It is not a sports bike. It doesn't have nearly half the amount of power as a sports bike does. It is a cruiser. End of. Right, I'm going to try and find some more uh, twisty roads. To take this bike on. Let's do it. The sound of this bike is really, really nice. I think it's, like I was saying earlier, I'm pretty sure it's just all induction noise. So when it comes to actually getting the bike linked up with that arrow exhaust system 
I've got a funny feeling this bike is going to sound awesome. At the end of the day, it is a parallel twin. So you're not going to have that heavy thump of a force. Oh, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Left seat again. You're not going to have that heavy thump of a four cylinder, but you are going to have quite a nice tune, I think. Now, this is where this bike excels. Look, in the forest, cruising out, legs stretched, arms stretched. Just absolutely loving it. What have we got here? West Tisted. Smuggler's Lane. That sounds really cool. I'm have to get a photo next to a uh, Smuggler's Lane. Next to the big bone that's underneath my foot. So I thought I'd just stop outside of a really good sign. Smuggler's Lane. How cool is that? I just had to stop it. Really sad, I know. So here we go. The 2021 Kawasaki Vulcan S650 performance model. This is a 60 brake horsepower, liquid cooled, 8 valve, double overhead cam, parallel twin engine, producing its 60 horsepower at 7,500 RPM. It comes in at 46.4 foot pound of torque at 6,600 RPM. And as you see in my review, that is plenty of power for this motorcycle. It really does hold its own in its 650 category. The seat height is 705 millimeters, which is again a ridiculously low cruiser style seat. And when you sit on it, for a five foot seven, you're flat footed, stand up, and it's really low down between your legs. So this bike, if you're a short rider, is no problem at all. However, if you are a tall rider, you may find that when you're sitting at traffic lights, your knees are quite scrunched up. So get on it, take it for a ride, let me know what you think in the comments below. Now the weight of this bike is 229 kilograms. That isn't really an issue. It sounds a lot, and it is a lot. However, when you're maneuvering this bike, that's when you really feel the weight. I've taken the rear seat off this, so I haven't got anything to grab hold of. So for me maneuvering it, it does feel sometimes that it could come out of your hands, and that is a bit of a worry. But if you've got the, um, the sissy bar, or even the rear seat, I don't think you're gonna have any issues at all maneuvering this bike. The fuel is obviously unleaded, 14 litre fuel tank. You're looking around about 57 miles per gallon on this bike, which is pretty good considering it's only a 14 litre tank. The front suspension is 41 millimetre forks, they're non adjustable, and at the rear you've got a single rear shock adjustable spring for preload only. This bike is as basic as they come. However, do not let that put you off because I really do think the Kawasaki Falcon S650 performance model, as this one is, is a really, really good motorcycle. For those of you who are really good with uh, spotting the little details, you'll notice this does not have a performance exhaust. Now the reason behind that, as you'll see in the video, is because there is a backlog on the exhaust from manufacturers. So I bought this bike brand new, had about two miles on the clock, but it came with the standard exhaust. Hopefully, by the end of this month, we should have the full exhaust system put on the bike. I'm just going to sit on the bike and show you uh, a bit. So there we go. Five foot seven. My knees are completely bent. The riding position is a really chilled out, lazy rider. But it's a fantastic position to get in. Um, the seat here is comfortable for a short ride do go on a long distance ride you will find this seat does get slightly uncomfortable the feet can be moved back slightly so what I think I'm going to get Kawasaki to do is pull the uh, feet back slightly so then my feet are pushing me back onto the seat um, but as you can see there there isn't much between the actual rear tail of this bike the seat and the backside so maybe look into a new seat if you do not like this one but all in all it is a fantastic machine I love riding it, I'm glad I spent the money on it. I probably won't be keeping it uh, past three or four years, depending on what the PCP terms are at the end of it. But in general, it's a nice motorcycle and I do like it. So, from Smuggler's Lane in Hampshire, thank you for watching Rev Solutions. Thank you for watching the video on the Vulcan S650 performance. And until next time, ride safe, we'll see you soon.